Hey, I'm so glad you're here today. I have an interesting topic for you, or at least I think it's interesting. Um, it's something that I think is so important in life and often is very overlooked. So stick with me to the very end and see what it's see what our topic is for the day. So today I want to talk to you about connection. If you've watched any of my other videos, um, I did a silly little series on vitamins for emotional health and one of them, vitamin C, is connectedness. And um, so that's a quick one. If you guys want to go watch that, you can. Um, but it's just about needing to be connected because that's how we are wired and designed. But I wanted to dig into this a little bit more in this video because I think it is severely overlooked. And I also think that our connections that we have sometimes aren't really true connections like they need to be or like our heart, mind, and soul craves. So... I wanted to dig into it a little bit more because even if you're not an extroverted person, if you're an introvert and you're like, I would prefer not to be with people, at the end of the day, we are all still very much so designed to be in fellowship with people and to be in connection with people. And um, like I mentioned in my vitamin C video, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, it's a little pyramid, you can look that up if you want. And it shows that we have our basic needs of survival, which is um, like food, water, shelter. And right after that, we have a need for belonging and um, connectedness really. So a sense of being with people is so important but it's not just being with people it's not just going to a party or a gathering or a birthday party or whatever it's not just being there but it's having people in your life that you are truly connected to some people are married and wildly unconnected right and some people are in a family that they're totally not connected to now there could be reasons for that there could be good reasons there could be good boundaries there but overall i still think that there's something to be said about if we are keeping um, a boundary that's not necessarily for healthy reasons, but more for hiding reasons, more because we are trying to avoid some sort of connection or we're trying to avoid something in ourself that might come out when we make a connection with other people. It's important to know that these connections are life-giving. They are necessary for life. I heard something somewhere that I wish I could remember who it was or where it was to give them appropriate credit, but I really don't. I, um, I wrote it down because it, it stood out to me as being so powerful and pro profound. And what it, was, what it said was that an alcoholic is someone that drinks to make their heart feel good, but really what they're doing is making their mind feel good. And that hit me like a ton of bricks because I think it is absolutely true that if you are, and again, this is just for example's sake as an alcoholic, but the person who is um, drinking to change how they feel, they are drinking to try to change how their heart feels. Um, and really what they're doing is tricking their mind for a minute, but at the end of the day, it wears off and their heart is still in the same place. Their heart is still really suffering. Real connection is what heals that heart. Real connection is what makes your heart sore. Real connection addresses the heart and not just the mind, right? So I'm not saying that every alcoholic's problem is that they need more connection, but they probably do. That's probably at least part of the puzzle. There's lots of other pieces, but connection where they can really be themselves and they can be honest with themselves and with others is part of it. Now, this video is not about alcoholics. That's just one example to share with you that lots of things we do are maybe in, intended to heal our heart and it really is actually doing something to our mind, but it's it's more like it's tricking the mind, right? It's not really getting at the heart, no pun intended, of the matter. It's something that we all need to be aware of because real connection with people is what does that. Having a sense of belonging, a sense of value and worth with others that love you is important. Now, this is another part of this is with social media nowadays, we have people that have thousands and bajillions of followers and likes and hearts and all the things, but 
that does not equate connection. That does not equate having value or worth. If anything, I think a lot of those people might feel a little bit empty. Not all, certainly, but some of them might because that's a, again, that's addressing the mind. Oh, 50,000 people liked my post, but the heart doesn't feel a true connection from that. Now, again, not everybody is in that boat, but I think a lot are. And I think something that is hard with the world that we live in now is we make it very easy to be disconnected. It's a disconnect through our phone. It's disconnected to have relationships that are just afar or through the phone. And don't get me wrong, I know that can happen. I know there's good, real people that you can meet through the phone and that's okay. But you have to have those true connected relationships in your real personal life sitting around your kitchen table with you. You need those as well. They are paramount to your life and health and well-being. Having that sense of connection and belonging is really important for our health as well. Um, I've watched a couple of documentaries and read a few things that are just kind of fascinating to me, fascinating to me about centurions, which is people who live to be a hundred or more. And one thing that is common in all of them is that they have such a sense of connectedness to family primarily, but a, a connectedness to the ones that they love. I just think it's so important and so fascinating to see that people who live to be a hundred, a lot of them have different diets, a lot of them have different um, living circumstances, different environments, different DNA, different genetics, all of that. But one really common theme is that they have great, solid, connected relationships with the people that they love. You can't tell me that that's not part of the puzzle, right? I know those other things play into it, genetics and health and all of that. Absolutely, I agree. Those definitely play into it. But I would not throw out that their connectedness to the ones that they love doesn't have a big impact as well. So it's something to be aware of, especially in this culture where it's really easy to just do everything through our phones or through our computers or whatever it is, or it's also really easy to show up to social events and not really be present, or it's really easy to not go out with a friend or not reach out to that person. It's so easy to not do all of those things. And I get that. But I think that it's not serving us well. We can buy anything that we want on the online. And I love doing that, right? There's some great benefit to having something show up to your doorstep two days later. But as a whole, I really think our society is suffering from our lack of connection, our lack of human interaction at times, our lack of community even. Um, and I know this is not the case for everybody, but it's becoming more of a thing because of our access to technology and because of the way that we do things through there. So like I said, don't get me wrong, it's okay to buy things online, but we have to still try to maintain the balance of our connectedness. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any thoughts, comments, questions, leave them below, hit all the buttons, and I'll see you in the next video.